Hello, my name is Kelly McCown. I'm a teacher, author, and the owner of Teaching Math and More LLC. Today on the Teaching Math and More channel, we are talking about how to assess and evaluate students, which is the final video of our five-part series on how to achieve math mastery in your classroom to help your students achieve success in math. Where do you start? The goal of math mastery is to teach your students a deeper understanding of math so that they have acquired the fundamental concepts by the end of the school year. What skills do you want your students to master? Math mastery is a way of teaching math skills to your students in a meaningful way. Teaching math mastery doesn't have to be stressful or overwhelming. Let's look at the final part of math mastery, evaluation. Math mastery is a teaching approach with five parts. Part one is vocabulary. Part two is hands-on. Part three is notes taking. Part four is applications of problems. We talked about that in our last video. Today we're looking at part five. The last step of math mastery is assessment and evaluating students. Assessment is when students are evaluated on one concept or more. This can be done with reflections, providing evidence with a summative project, or giving a written test. Students show mastery of their knowledge of the math concept by demonstrating proficiency through assessment. Once mastery of math concepts has been demonstrated, math mastery has been attained. Students assess skills by passing an assessment or math test. When students do this, that means that they've mastered the skills by passing. Do they know what a skill is? How to use it and apply it? It's the last step of math mastery. Students should be taking an independent assessment to showcase they've mastered the math skill. Students show math mastery of their knowledge with this assessment, and once mastery of math concepts has been demonstrated, math mastery has been attained. It comes down to this. Do you assess your students' math mastery of an individual skill? Do you have students provide evidence that they've learned the skill? Do you use a summative math project? Do you use math tests and assessments? to check for mastery of skills? Providing evidence isn't as hard as it sounds. Students just need to show that they've learned the math skill by doing the following. One, writing problems and providing a correct answer key. Two, explaining how to solve a problem correctly. Or three, finding an error in a solution and correcting it. Assessing students isn't always done with a test. Sometimes you can assign a project as a summative assessment. Math projects encourage students to be assessed in a different way. Students can demonstrate that they have learned a math skill by making a math game board, creating a presentation, or building a STEM project. This can be applied to most any skill. You can do a math project that focuses on that one skill. Math projects are the perfect solution for engaging students in showing what they know. Math tests are also a good way to evaluate students' knowledge of a math concept. You can assign summative math quizzes that are five questions of the same skill, or you can assign a summative math test, like a mid-year test that evaluates what the student has learned the first half of the school year. Or you can assign a summative math test, like an end-of-year math test, which evaluates the entire learning that has happened during the school year. Evaluating students can be done in a variety of ways with math tests. You can use multiple choice, short answer, or written response questions to evaluate their knowledge. When teaching students how to evaluate math concepts for the first time, you may have some questions about how it will run more smoothly. Here are some tips that have helped. Number one, tracking with a data tracker. It's easy to use and record your students' data. There are only three assessments that are indicators of how your students will do in your grade level. So there's beginning of year, mid-year, and end of year assessments. Record and track these assessments to help your students have success in math this school year. Included in your math mastery notes for the video on pages 20 and 21 is the data tracker. If you would like to grab a copy, the link is in the resources and notes of this video's description. Number two, evaluate less. Now, I know this may sound backwards, but when you actually evaluate your students less and let them learn more, they will grow. So don't focus on giving your students assessments all the time. They will quickly be overtaken by tests and they will have anxiety and other issues. Instead, decide which assessments are necessary to evaluate your student by choosing only three major assessments like a beginning, mid-year, and end of your test to measure your student's progress alleviates the stress of over-testing. And number three, complete the math project in class. The best advice for anyone that's assigning a math project 
is to have your students complete it in class. This allows for the kids to have time and space to work on it. Not all kids have time and space at home. Set a timer on the board and let the student know how long they have to finish the project in class for a grade. This is a great alternative to testing to evaluate your student. There is a solution to the problem of how to evaluate math concepts. Try teaching with the right resources, Choose which is best for your class by providing evidence, using math projects, or math tests. You can plan for a deeper level of understanding of mathematics with your students. Evaluating math skills doesn't have to be difficult when you have the right resources. Here are the top three resources for evaluating students' math skills. Number one, math projects, in which students have to apply math skills to solve projects. Number two, mid-year math test, in which students are evaluated on the first semester of math concepts. And number three, end of year math test, in which students are evaluated on first and second semester math concepts. Links to all these resources are in the description of this video. For more information about the Math Mastery video series, be sure to check out the description of this video. This is the last video in the Math Mastery five-part series. I'm so glad that you've joined me for this series to help your students have success in math too. The link to get the Math Mastery video notes and resources mentioned are in the description. Thank you for subscribing to our channel, Teaching Math and More. See you next time.